Hey guys, JK Wargames, and today we're going to look at how to play Flames of War 4th Edition. So you will need the rule book, unit cards, army books, dice, and a measuring tape. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is unit cards. If you're looking to play Flames of War, I highly recommend getting unit cards. Basically, the unit cards have all the stats for movement, firing, special rules. It's all there on a card. You don't need to flip through a book to find it. So I definitely advise getting the cards. So if we just have a look at this card for the Stug, you can see it gives you your rate of fire for halted or moving. You've got your anti-tank, which we'll get into in a bit. You've got armor. Um, so everything you need is on the card. But also, you can use the book, which I have here, Armies of Late War. This will show you the same thing. So it, you can do it either way you want. These are really nice books as well. And obviously, the rule book has a few bits and bobs in it. So the first thing we're going to look at, guys, is movement. Okay, let's look at movement then. So we can see for the Stug, he's got a tactical movement of 10 inches or 25 centimeters. He's got a terrain dash of 12, cross country dash of 18, and road dash of 20. So, um, tactical means that he can move at 10 and then fire. And a cross country dash means that he can move up to 18, but he won't be able to fire. But it's a good way of getting up to objectives. And a road dash is he can move up to 20 if he was on a road, but he won't be able to fire. So, let's, let's just look at moving tactical. So, here we go. He can move, we've got a little stug here, look. He can move 10. So, simple as that, he moves up. He can now, you'd move the rest of your models and then they'd be able to fire. But there's also a thing in movement called a cross check. So let's just say our stug is here and he wants to move at tactical. So he starts moving up, he gets to the obstacle. Now he needs to do a cross check to be able to get over the obstacle. So we look at our card, it's a three plus. So we need to roll a three plus to cross that obstacle. And we roll a two. So that would mean that this stug cannot cross the obstacle. He just stops there where he is. So if you had a unit, so we had two more stugs, some of them might pass and some of them might not. So let's say he did roll four. That's fine, he's passed his cross check, he can move over the obstacle up to his full 10. In previous editions, it used to be a bog check. So if you failed, that guy would just get stuck there for the rest of the game. But it's it's a lot better now. Okay, so that's about it for movement. The game starts. First player moves all his units. Then he shoots. Then he assaults. So let's go into shooting. Right, guys, let's look at shooting then. So this Sherman is going to fire across at the Stug. So how we work this out is that the target has a hit number. So the Stug, because he's the target, he is hit on 4+. plus. So we know that we need a 4+, plus to hit the Stug. Now if he was in cover, there's cover, which there is, there's a bit of cover between me and him, it goes to a 5. And if he was at long range, over 16 inches in Flames of War, it would be a 6. And if the Stug hadn't shot yet, and he was in cover, he would be gone to ground. So it would be a plus two to hit. So it would be a lot harder. But for this little demo here, it's going to be a four, because the Stug's hit on a four. And there's a bit of hedgerow in between us. The Sherman isn't right up against it, so it counts as a little bit of intervening terrain. So we need a five. Now the Sherman rolls two dice, because he hasn't moved. Most tanks in the game get two dice for sitting still and one dice for moving. So let's say the Sherman hasn't moved. He's going to roll his halted rate of fire, which is two dice. And we know he needs a five plus. So let's roll the dice. And he's got one hit. So the three is a miss, but the five has hit. So now the Stug has to roll an armor save. So we look at the armour of the Stug. He's got a front armour of 7. Now if he was at long range, over 16 inches, his front armour gets a plus 1, so it'd be an 8. 
but in this instance, it isn't. So his front arm is 7, and the anti-tank rating of my Sherman is a 10. So he needs to beat that anti-tank rating. So we take 7, and then roll a dice and add that to it. So 7, 8, 9, 10 has equaled. So if you equal the anti-tank rating, you can only be bailed out. So then my Sherman would now make a firepower test, needing a 3 plus to bail out the tank. So let's roll the firepower test. He rolls a 2. No effect, that stug would be fine. But let's say he rolled a 4. He's successful in his firepower test. That stug would now be bailed out, which means that your opponent is going to have to try and remount the crew in at the start of his turn. And if he doesn't, that tank's going to miss a whole turn. He won't be able to do anything. But let's say his armor save failed. Let's say the stug rolled a 1. He hasn't equaled or mat all gone over the anti-tank rating of 10. He's only got an 8 because his arm is 7 plus the 1 is 8. It's not enough. So the Sherman now would make his firepower test of 3 plus to destroy the Stug. So we roll the dice and a 2 would mean that the Stug is bailed. But if we succeeded in rolling that 3 plus, the Stug has been destroyed, target destroyed. So Things to remember when shooting. If you equal the armor, uh, sorry, if you equal the anti tank, you can only be bailed out. If you fail, you can be destroyed if your opponent makes his firepower check, or you can be bailed out if he fails his firepower check. So let's just quickly look at moving and firing. So let's just say in our movement step, our Sherman moved. So he's only going to get one dice. But the American Shermans do have a special rule where they get to roll two dice for moving, but they have to use stabilizers. But we won't go into that. We're not going to complicate it. So let's just say he's moved. He would only get one dice to try and fire at his opponent. And with a six, he would have he would hit. So hopefully that hasn't overcomplicated things, guys. It's pretty easy. If a target fails his armor save then you're rolling a firepower test to either bail him out or destroy him okay so at the start of your turn you have to tidy things up a bit so if you've got a tank any tanks bailed out you need to try and remount them so as you can see the stug's been bailed out so we need to make a motivation test to remount so you can see here that normally it'd be a four plus but he's got protected ammo, so he remounts on a 3+. plus. So we'd roll a dice, and we've got a 5, which is more than enough, and they get back in the tank, and that tank's fine. So you go through any tanks that are bailed out and make your remount checks. Okay, so let's look at infantry in the game. So infantry have their own stats. So if we look at the Grenada platoon, we can see that they have rifle MG teams. They get two dice when they're halted and one dice for moving. And their tactical move is eight inches. So let's just say this infantry has moved up. So they're going to get one shot each. So that's one shot for each base. So that's three shots. So we take three dice. And they're firing on the American infantry behind the hedgerow. So I know that the American infantry are hit on fours, but they've got some cover there, so it's fives. So the infantry would roll their dice, needing fives, and they've got one hit. Now, the German player would assign the hit to a team, like that, and then the infantry would make a save. Now all infantry have a save of three plus. It's just a straight up save, it's not like tanks. So you'd roll the dice, a four, they're completely fine. Now if they failed, they rolled a one, they would be dead, taken out of action. But if they're dug in or behind bulletproof cover, so bulletproof cover is like stone walls, hard cover, the Germans would need to make a firepower check. So let's just say that this, this hedge is a, is a stone wall and these guys are dug in behind it. 
So they Americans have failed. The Germans now need to make a firepower check because of that bulletproof cover. So they'd look at their firepower check, and it's a six. So they need a six to get rid of them, and they failed. So they'd be absolutely fine. So dug-in infantry are incredibly hard to get rid of. So that's the basics of shooting at infantry. Let's look at assaults. Okay, let's talk about assaults then. So once you've done movement and shooting, it's time to assault. So if you are within four inches of a target, you can assault it. So this German infantry are within four inches of this Sherman. So they're going to move up and assault it. So the front two teams move in. And as long as this guy is within four inches of his own team, he can also fight like that. If we had guys back here and they couldn't make it to within four inches of the uh, into contact with these guys, they wouldn't be able to fight. So before the assault goes ahead, the Sherman gets to fire defensive fire. Now, anyone within eight inches of the enemy can fire defensive fire. So these Shermans are going to get to fire, both fire defensive fire. So they're going to fire their machine guns. Now, most importantly, if the enemy infantry take five or more hits, they are pinned and pushed back two inches and the assault won't happen. So let's see what happens. And we need four pluses to hit the infantry. So we roll our dice and we have one, two, three, four, five hits. So we have pushed back the infantry. So they would go back two inches and the assault doesn't happen. They're pinned down and then they would have to make their saves. But let's just say we only got three hits. We would assign the three hits to the infantry. They would make their saves. Let's say they save them all. They're absolutely fine. The assault goes ahead. So how it works. Each team gets one dice. So we've got three teams there. They all get one dice. Now they hit on their skill rating, which is a three plus. So they all roll, needing threes, and we've got one hit. So the tank has been hit once. Now how the tank makes a save in an assault is using his top armor of one versus the anti-tank of two. So as long as he doesn't roll a one, he'll be okay. So he rolls his dice, he's saved, he's fine. But let's say he did roll a one, he's failed. And because of one, and his top armor is one, equals two, it equals the anti-tank rating of the rifle teams. So he is automatically bailed out. There's no firepower test in assaults. He's automatically bailed out. And then the next step for the assault is that the Americans have to try and motivate to fight back. And they need a four plus. So they'd roll the dice. Nope, they failed. So... The Sherman needs to get out of the assault. He has to move back up to six inches. But we've got a problem. He's bailed out, so he can't. So he is captured. Anyone that can't move out of six inches when they can't motivate is captured and destroyed. So he's destroyed. But if he did motivate back, let's just say they got a five on their motivation, this tank can move into the assault because he is within four inches of that team. So he'd move in. Each tank gets one dice to swing on their skill rating, which is a three plus. So the first tank would swing. Nope. And the second tank gets a four. There's no saves and assaults for infantry. They're just killed outright. It's brutal and bloody. So that's how assaults work. Let's look at artillery. Let's look at artillery then. So these two guns, 10.5 centimeter artillery battery for the Germans, are going to fire across here at these Shermans and the infantry. So they need a spotter, which is here. So the spotter can see the targets. If they didn't have the spotter, the artillery need to be able to see the target. But they've got the spotter, so it's okay. So the first thing we do is grab our Flames of War template, and we try and cover as much as we can. So basically, we cover three infantry teams and two tanks. 
Now, what we have to do is range in, and we get three attempts. Now, normally, we range in on our skill, which is a three plus. But the template is covering terrain. It's covering the building and the tree. So it goes to a four plus. So we get three attempts, needing a four plus. So first attempt, we got it. We got it on the first attempt. Now, if we got it on this, if we failed that and got it on this second attempt, it would be plus one to hit our target. But we got it on the first attempt, so it's fine. So we now roll to hit everything under the template. So the infantry teams are hit on fours. So we take the first infantry team. No. Nope. Second one. Yep, they're hit. The third one. Nope, they're not hit. But they are pinned. If infantry take a single hit from artillery, they are pinned. So this team would make their save of three plus, which they made. We then roll for both tanks. So this tank is going to be hit on a four plus because we know he's hit on a four. Nope. And the tank next to him is hit. So that tank would make a save using his top armor one. So one is four. So he's beaten the anti-tank of the artillery, which is a three. So if he failed that, the artillery would then make a firepower test that we've already seen. Now, what I didn't explain just before I put the template down is you have to put an aiming point down. So my aiming point would have been there. Now, because we ranged in, we were successful ranging in, we leave that there and we don't need to range in next time. If these guys don't move, we can just go straight back in our uh, turn and just start hitting the enemies again. But if they move, we have to range in again. Or if we choose to shoot at another target, we have to range in on them. So that's artillery. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at Flames of War, how to play. I've only gone through the very basics of the game. There are other things like blitz move, follow the leader move, but it's all in the rule book and I didn't want to go too in depth with it. I just wanted to give a brief outline of how the game is played. So if you enjoyed my content guys, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.